Good morning, folks. A very warm welcome to you here at Hamilton Old Parish Church of Scotland. Today is the 3rd of May, and I trust you'll have a, a good day today and also enjoy your time worshipping with us, whether it's on the live stream or at a later point from the recording. Uh, there are no particular intimations for this morning, only really to mention that, of course, yesterday we had the funeral of uh, our, uh, one of our elders, Jim Naismith, uh, yesterday morning, and, and of course many were unable to attend that, although there was a, a web link for, for some to be able to view uh, on that occasion. But what we have been able to do is uh, bring the flowers uh, for, into the church uh, from the funeral, and so I'm going to leave you with those just for a few minutes as I go and finish uh, making my preparations. Uh, so we'll catch you very shortly uh, for the beginning of our service. Thank you.
Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to this fourth week of Easter and our worship here at Hamilton Old Parish Church of Scotland. Amongst other things, uh, this week would normally have been, and certainly have been planned to be, a Boys' Brigade service where we could uh, celebrate the work of the Boys' Brigade over the course of this past year. Of course, for the last six weeks, uh, they've been less able to undertake the usual activities that they would have uh, been undertaking, particularly on a Wednesday evening in the halls or various other pursuits uh, that they have throughout the year. But uh, nonetheless, they have managed to do an amazing amount even in the time of this particular session. So we're very pleased to be able to congratulate them for that. Of course, after the service this morning, we would normally have had a Boys Brigade coffee morning. I'm afraid that's obviously not possible, but I will take the opportunity to uh, wish that you have a a beverage in hand, perhaps for our service, or certainly shortly afterwards, so that uh, you can perhaps have a wee think about the Boys Brigade, both here and also all over the world, wherever it's to be found. But we're gathered to worship this morning with words from Psalm 30. May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. Let's uh, sing together hymn 530. Hopefully the words will come up on the screen. One more step along the world I'll go. Lord God, you are our Savior and King, our Master and Friend, our Shepherd and our Guide. Wherever we go, you are with us. Wherever we stray, you seek us out. Whenever we call, you hear us. You are our promise and our hope, our place of rest and peace our security and our sureness. Whoever we are, you accept us. Whatever we do, you love us. Whenever we fall, 
you lift us up. Lord God, we gather this morning in different places, having different lives and different situations with different concerns and different dreams. We come as young and old and everything in between, yet we come as one, a people of shared faith in a God who shared all. And so we praise you, Lord God, that you have risen from the dead to fulfill your promise to all creation. We praise you that you have gifted us your spirit as a companion and guide. We praise you that you've chosen us as your people to build your kingdom here on earth. We ask that you would help us in our efforts to help ourselves and one another. We pray for the boys of the Boys Brigade and also the Scouts and other youth organizations, the girls of the Guiding Movement. We pray especially for our youths and for this generation with all that they are facing and must yet face. Gracious God, our path in life does not always lead us into quiet, calm places of caring and compassion for others. Our journey often takes us off the beaten track and perhaps even into the difficult terrain of selfishness and anger. Our progress is often slowed by fear and anxiety. Yet you remain at our side, Lord, to comfort and provide, reminding us of your promise that all is forgiven for all time. And so we praise you, Lord, that you bless us anew each day with your grace and goodness, that you open doors to fresh opportunities, and that you lead us by the hand to a place we can call home. Take us from where we find ourselves, refreshed in our journey with you and with one another, that we might love you more and follow you more closely in Jesus' name. And so we take the words of our Lord's Prayer on our lips, saying together, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. We continue our worship now with a reading from the New Testament. It's going to be uh, the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Uh, picking up the, ver the reading at the verse marked 14, we're reading verses 14 to 41. And our reader today is uh, Alistair Buttery, who is the captain of our Boys Brigade company here in Hamilton, uh, with Hamilton First Company of the Boys Brigade. So we look forward to hearing that reading from Alistair. The reading is from Acts chapter 2, verses 14 to 41, from the Good News Version. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews, and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood, before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls in the name of the Lord 
will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's deliberate plan and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad, and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope, because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Fellow Israelites, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried at his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was to come, he spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, that he was not abandoned to the realm of the dead, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of it. Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand, until I make enemies a footstool for your feet. Therefore let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart, and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Amen. May God bless to us this reading of his holy word. Thank you, Alistair. We now listen to a, a previous recording uh, from uh, earlier in the year before lockdown of our choir singing the anthem, You Are My God.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today I'm looking around at a virtually empty church, a building that I love, but more importantly, missing a people that I love, who would normally be in the pews, upstairs, and down uh, this morning. I've tried to draw together some of the things that we enjoy, enjoy when we're having a boys' brigade service, but I have to be honest, it's not the same without you being here and present, whilst I'm sure you're certainly at home, hopefully taking in uh, what we have for the service this morning. We're in a period of change, but we've faced all sorts of changes before. The gallery over here used to be filled with boys from the Boys Brigade Company after the morning Bible study that they would enjoy over in the halls, I'm told, some time back. I'm not quite sure why that stopped being a practice or why even there are less boys these days, but I suspect it's perhaps because people just don't speak about their faith quite the same way. Very often it's consigned to being a personal matter or even something that you can take or leave. But certainly with regards to our boys' brigade, I'm I'm proud to be chaplain of First Company uh, here in Hamilton. I'm wearing my chaplain's badge here, if you wonder what that was on uh, my stall. And so it's a pleasure to be able to see the boys at different times of the week, particularly on a Wednesday evening, in all the different activities that they have as they come up through the boys' brigade and enjoy what's provided there. But this is a period of change even for them. Even though some work has been set for them online and they've been able to follow along with some of it at home, this is a significant change for them and for us all. The earliest Christians were also in a time of change. The events of Easter that we've celebrated and remembered just a a few weeks ago were recent memories for Jesus' disciples and they couldn't stop talking about it. They just simply couldn't stop talking about it. It was a daily thing for them, much like our Bible reading challenge that we use on a day-by-day basis to become more acquainted with Scripture. They would meet together. They would speak. They would read. They would sing. And for them, it wasn't just a challenge. They wanted to do it. They lived in challenging times. Their lives were at risk. But in the midst of those times, they wanted to know more about Christ. They wanted to spend time with one another. And they wanted to talk about him. Peter gets up and he has this to say in a speech that he makes out in the the town uh, streets on that particular uh, uh, morning when they've been uh, visited by the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, resulting in an immediate response from his hearers. I just want to pick out a few of the verses that we heard read just a little earlier there from Acts chapter 2. Just picking up the reading from 36. This is Peter's words as he continues with his sermon at that point. He says, Let all the house of Israel therefore know for certain that God has made him both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to himself. Well, where was the church back then? They had no building just a a borrowed upper room. The church were the people, the Christian congregation, wherever she was to be found. Initially, there were 120 of them. But by the end of that, the day of that particular speech, there were 3,000 that had been joined to them who professed Christ as being their Lord. So whether you are young or old, 
a child or a youth, a young adult, middle-aged, or perhaps maturing gently. Today, there is a word for you. The events of Easter are not just history. They're not for a far-off people that we can't think about. They are words and actions for us. Jesus enjoyed the splendor of heaven, but he wanted to share God's love for us. He wanted to walk with us side by side. He wanted to journey with us through all that we might face, through the very worst of what we might face, including death itself. And he wanted to carry us through that trial into heaven itself to be with him there. But you know, it's not entirely one-sided. Although everything that we receive from God is, in a sense, all from him, there is another side of this in our own response as well. What does he require of us? Those hearing Peter's message that morning had exactly the same question to ask. They asked, what shall we do? And Peter's reply, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. Now, in this day and age, perhaps most all of us have been baptized. But have we repented? Are we continuing to repent Have we even started to take stock of our lives? So much has been taken away at this particular time. What do you miss? Just what do you miss? What are you glad that you don't have to do at this particular time? What do you think was worthwhile? And what would you like to put back into your life when eventually lockdowns eased? Have you started to reprioritize perhaps what you started to do or what you'll continue to do when things become hopefully a little bit easier? I want to address that particular question to our youths for a moment, though this applies to everyone. In the Old Testament, in in Lamentations chapter 3, we read this. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul that seeks him. It's good that a person should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. It's good for a person to bear up in their youth. Now, unlike Peter, a few folk are frankly embarrassed to admit that they're Christians in a skeptical world in which we live. They perhaps assume that they know something of Scripture and then they know God and Christ, maybe from Sunday school, and other things that they've gleaned along the way, but maybe never really delve much deeper. They don't talk about Jesus much, and they certainly wouldn't think about inviting people to come along to church. Ironically, at the moment, it's never been easier than to perhaps just share a link or to to hit like. Do you think twice even about that? If you're a youth, you have a prime opportunity in that you learn quicker than most at this particular stage in your life. It's a never-to-be-repeated opportunity in the speed that you can learn about things. And for the rest of us, well, well, we'll just plod on to the best as we possibly can. But do you feel that it's time, perhaps, to learn a little bit more about God, a little bit more about Christ? Now is the time, either through your own reading or perhaps through the daily webcast as we take ourselves through just a chapter a day, reading and commenting and praying together for just a few minutes in the morning, or through conversations, either online or or through the phone, or maybe drop me a line and I'll see if I can possibly help. I'm reasonably approachable. And to be honest with you, I'm missing people. Please do get in contact. There are no silly questions. I can't promise that I'm not going to perhaps give a silly answer once in a while. But what do you miss? I want you to think on that a moment. What do you miss? 
for me, as I say, it's people. I suppose I wouldn't do this particular job if I couldn't bear people. But how do we spend our time with one another? Not just during lockdown, but also going forward. Have we thought about how our time is spent? Might it be more meaningfully spent? And not just over this life, but for the one ahead beyond as well. In the midst of that, we can, if not must, also reflect on how Jesus continues to be meaningful each and every day of our lives. He is an anchor to our soul. And as that anchor, it's not just about filling the galleries of the church, much as I'd be delighted to see them filled once more, but it's about each and every day, wherever we are to be found. Reading what he has to say to us, responding in prayer. And if we haven't taken the time perhaps to truly do that, perhaps now of all times, that might be time that's truly well spent. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, our usual places for communal prayer are empty. But never let it be said that our homes or our hearts are empty too. Give us an appetite for new things and old. Help us to read your words with fresh eyes and to be moved with a newborn heart for the start of every chapter in life with all its strange and unfamiliar territory can often bring so much discomfort. Yet it is a new opportunity to examine our lives, our conduct, our motivations, and our relationships with each other and with you. As we repent of the past, Help us to grasp the opportunity with both hands, with originality, as a clean start of all that we have for the future. In the name of Christ. Amen. We're going to conclude our service this morning singing hymn 737, Will Your Anchor Hold?
we go into this week giving thanks that we have a merciful God who is closer to us than we could ever imagine. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide upon you all now and evermore. Thank you.